The devil, he does not want you to hear from God. The devil, he really wants you to think that God doesn't love you. He really wants you to believe that God doesn't care about you. We have a Sunday school lesson this week that is going to take off the veil of the spiritual warfare that you and I face today. Hello there, thank you for joining me for another Sunday School lesson. I wanna ask all of you right now, if you aren't subscribed to the Newfound Faith channel, make sure that you do so right now. And then I ask all of you to like this week's lesson, make sure that you share this week's lesson with somebody, somewhere. Again, I have a goal, I want this channel, I want the Newfound Faith community, I want it to grow. And I want all of us to be able to grow together in our faith, our wisdom, and in our knowledge of the Lord. And again, if you have any questions, any comments, if you just want to say amen with this week's lesson, make sure that you leave a comment as well. Our lesson today, it opens up there in the 10th verse of the 10th chapter of Daniel. We'll see that a hand subtly touches Daniel, we're told there in that scripture which made him tremble on his knees and his hands. What is going on? We are already starting to wonder and ask. We take a look at the 11th verse. We are told there that the one who touched him said to Daniel, for I have now been sent to you. As the one was speaking, as the one was saying those words to Daniel, that same verse, it tells us that Daniel he was beginning to stand up to his feet. And again, we'll see there that Daniel was trembling. Again, we are left with questions, wondering what is it that is going on here? We have a couple of questions. Who is it that is touching Daniel? Who is it that was speaking here? Who is the one that has made Daniel tremble on his hands and on his knees? And, and then again, we can wonder here why was Daniel on the ground in the first place? Why was he on the ground? Why did he have to be touched while he was on the ground? Again, we are just trying to figure out, we are left wondering here, what is going on? Because the selected scripture of our lesson, it kind of opens us up in the middle of an event that was happening. It opens us up in the middle of this chapter, if you will. So we need to jump all the way back outside of the select scripture of our lesson so that we can get some context to, to what's going on. So let's go back to the first verse there, where we're told that a message and a vision about an appointed time had been revealed to Daniel. And then we're told there in the second and in the third verse that in those days, Daniel had been in mourning for some reason. He had been in mourning for three full weeks, we're told there. And then we're told there during those three full weeks that Daniel, he had ate no pleasant food, food again, which was good to eat according to the law. He had no meat, he ate nor drink any wine, we're told there. He had not anointed himself, we're told there, during those three weeks. So I want you to understand here what Daniel was doing. Daniel, he was fasting. And the reason why he was fasting was because Daniel was greatly troubled. We don't know the exact reason as to why it was that he was troubled, but again, we can clearly see here that Daniel, he was fasting. And when one fasts, what they are doing is they are letting go of the world to try to get closer to the Lord. They are meditating. They are communicating with the Lord because they are seeking clarity they are seeking understanding. So we need to try to understand, we need to try to figure out here, why was it that Daniel was fasting? Again, scripture does not give us the exact reason why. But again, when we take a look at the opening verses there, we, we get the time period that this was taking place in so we can kind of speculate because we'll see mention there of Cyrus. And again, we're told that this was about the third year of Cyrus. And so we know that something had happened in his first year. We know that in his first year, we know that there was a group of Jews who were allowed to return back to their home. They were allowed to go back to the land of Judea. They were allowed to go back to Jerusalem. And something else that we know from scripture, when we go back to the book of Ezra, we can see that the return back to Judea and to Jerusalem, it was not one that was simple and easy for the Jews. There were troubles, there were struggles. And it is, we can speculate, 
likely something that troubled and bothered Daniel as well. And so we're told there in the fourth and in the fifth verse that on the 24th day of the first month, Daniel, he had a visitor. Daniel, he says that he was by the side of the Tigris when he lifted up his eyes and he saw a quote unquote, certain man. I see you again, certain man. He saw a certain man who, again, Daniel tells us there, was clothed in linen. He wore a gold belt around his waist. Pay attention to these descriptions here. We'll see there in the sixth verse that the certain man had a face like the appearance of lightning. And then look at his eyes. Daniel said that his eyes, they were like torches of fire. Let me ask all of you something. Have you seen that description before in scripture? Have you seen that description before in recent weeks? I don't know if you all remember this, but we had a Sunday school lesson about the son of man to where I referenced the first chapter of the revelation of Christ and the description of the son of man that we saw in the first chapter of the revelation of Christ. It sounded a whole like, like what we see here in this 10th chapter of Daniel. Now, I am one who is in the camp of that this certain man was Christ. There are some who don't think that this was Christ, but again, look at the description. I believe that this certain man was Christ because of the description. And then when you go and you take a look at the parables of Jesus, Jesus, he often referred to himself or to the Father, to the Lord, which again is him as the certain man a certain man. You see that throughout the parables. I am one who believes that Daniel, he saw Christ. He saw Christ in his glory. Now the question is, why was it that he was seeing Christ in his glory? Again, I tell you that Daniel, who's trying to get close to the Lord, he had been fasting and we're told that he had been fasting for, for three weeks there. And so Daniel, he had been fasting, trying to get close to Christ. And I tell you, I believe that he saw Christ. And in the eighth verse there, we're told that Daniel, he was the only one that saw this vision of Christ. He was the only one that had been fasting, trying to again, get close to the Lord. But we're told there in the eighth verse, again, something very important here. Daniel, he tells us that he was unable to retain any strength in himself and that his vigor, Daniel said, it turned into frailty. In other words, Daniel, he was going weak. And there in the ninth verse, Daniel, he said that he could hear, he could hear the words of that certain man, who again, I believe was Christ. He could hear his words, but Daniel, he tells us there in the ninth verse, he had gotten so weak that he passed out. Daniel, he says there that his face hit the ground. And so this is why our lesson actually opens with Daniel. Essentially, he was on the ground, but he was touched by someone was touched by someone who caused him to have a little bit of strength to be able to start standing to his feet. He got to his hands and to his knees. And then while that one was speaking, we saw that Daniel was able to stand up again. Let us remember that that one, as he was speaking to Daniel and touching him, he said, I was sent to you. Who do you think it was that was sent to Daniel that caused him to tremble? I tell you that the one that was sent to Daniel, was an angel of God. In the 12th verse, the angel, I believe, tells Daniel there, we'll see that he was sent to him because of, quote unquote, your words. What words is the angel speaking about here? What words that was it that Daniel had shared there? Again, I remind you here, Daniel had been fasting. And again, when one is fasting, they are communicating with the Lord. They are meditating. They are focusing in on the Lord spiritually. This was a spiritual fast. And so Daniel, he was praying. He was making supplication to the Lord. And the Lord heard those words. And the Lord sent an, an angel to Daniel. Daniel had been communicating. Daniel had been praying to God. He had been calling on the Lord in his trouble and in his mourning. And again, we see here that God had answered. There was a problem. Daniel, he passed out. And so the angel tells Daniel there in the 12th verse that from the first day that Daniel had set in his heart to understand and to humble himself, 
his words were heard the angel said there the angel again had come to daniel because of his prayers and again the first day that daniel prayed again the angel was sent in an answer to daniel now the astute student the one that was paying attention to what the scripture has said there they'll think back to hey it's been a few weeks it had been three weeks that Daniel was in mourning. And so they'll say, well, why did it take so long if, if the angel, if the prayer was heard on the first day, why did it take the angel three weeks to, to get to Daniel? Some will begin to wonder, well, God really does move slow, doesn't he? Here's where the veil to the spiritual warfare that you and I are a part of today here is where that veil is lifted off of our eyes, where it is pulled down. We'll see there in the 13th verse that the angel tells Daniel, the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Questions, questions, questions that we have about this skin. Take a close look at that verse there. Who is it that could have withstood an angel of God? Who is it that could do that? Then also, who is this prince? Who's the prince? Because we're told that a prince withstood. So who is this prince that, that was able to do it? Was it a mere man, a mortal? A mortal was able to stop an angel? What do you think about that? And then who is Michael? Some of you may be familiar with who Michael is, but some of us may not know who Michael is. So, so who is Michael? And then there, again, at the end of that verse there, we're told about kings of Persia. So who were the kings of Persia that stood with the prince of the kingdom of Persia, who again was withstanding the angel that was sent from God? Let's try to answer these questions as well. We got a lot of questions here, don't we? So can a mere man, can a mere mortal withstand an angel of God? Can you stop, prevent, hinder an angel of God? You can't do it. <laughs> no mere mortal, no man can, can withstop, withstand an, an angel of God. The only one that could be able to withstand an angel of God would be either God himself, because God, again, he is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. He is almighty, right? Or maybe another angel, right? God or another angel. In this case, again, we know that the angel was sent to Daniel, right? And so again, we have one that was withstanding, one that was preventing, one that was hindering, one that was stopping the angel from doing its task. And so again, this certainly wasn't God that was preventing the angel from, from doing his task because God sent the angel to Daniel, right? And so the only other answer to this is, well, it must've been another angel that was preventing, that was hindering, that was stopping this angel from doing its task, from doing its job. And so we have an answer there, okay? But this angel wasn't on the side of God, right? Because this angel was preventing, this angel was stopping the Lord. This angel was working against God. This prince, okay, this other angel, was working against God. So this prince was a fallen prince, a fallen angel. In other words, this prince was a demon. What about Michael? Who is Michael? Again, some of us, we may be familiar with that name, Michael. Over in Jude's letter, Michael is mentioned, the archangel Michael, as shown there in the ninth verse of Jude. And the archangel or the chief prince, as we see here, they are of the higher hierarchy of the angels of God. Again, there is mention of Michael over in the 12th chapter of Revelation in the seventh through the 10th verse, where in that scripture, Michael, he's seen in heaven warring against the devil and his angels that was with him where again in that scripture we'll see that michael he prevailed against the devil and and his angels and he cast the devil out of heaven and we're told that the devil and his angels who are now demons they fell from heaven they were cast down to the earth so again we, we have some answers here 
and we can begin to wonder again whether or not it was a the was it the devil that was preventing the angel yes it was the devil in a manner of speaking that was preventing the angels it was one of his his demons who are of his army that was preventing the angel from going to help Daniel out. Again, we're seeing a part of the spiritual warfare that many of us, we don't even think about on a daily basis to where again, the job of the angels of God is to tend to us. They are to tend to us. They are to minister to us. And here we see where the, the demons who are of the army of the devil where they will try to prevent, they will try to stop God's angels from ministering and tending to your every need. So we'll see here something that we should do in this, this spiritual warfare. Daniel, he continued to meditate. He continued to focus on the Lord. In other words, Daniel, he remained faithful. In this spiritual warfare, you must remain faithful. Don't give up on the Lord. Continue to remain faithful. You be diligent in your prayer, as scripture often says. Because again, you and I, we may think that we wrestle against flesh and blood, but as Paul said, we aren't wrestling against flesh and blood. We are wrestling against the, the spiritual realm, against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and, and spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places that are again set against the Lord and will attack God by attacking us, God's children. And so this revelation to Daniel here, we're told there in the 15th verse, that it calls Daniel to become speechless. And then we're told there that another one arrived, one having the likeness of the sons of men. Again, this is another angel has arrived, another angel here to again touch Daniel's lip to give him strength to be able to speak. So we have two angels now with Daniel that are tending to angel. We have another angel here that has joined Daniel to again help Daniel out. Again, I want you to see here how it is that angels, how it is that they tend to us around the clock on, on a daily basis here. And so we'll see there in 16 verse that, that when this angel, when it had come and when it had touched Daniel's lips, Daniel, he began to speak. He said that his visions of the appointed time had made him sorrowful, Daniel said there. Daniel, he almost sounds ashamed here in the next verse there in the 17th verse when he asked for, how can this servant of my Lord talk with you? No strength remains in me, nor is any breath left in me. You see, there are gonna be a lot of times where we are just like Daniel, where we have those moments and times where, where we are overwhelmed. Where, where we may feel like we are weak, where we are about to faint. Where again, we should do just as Daniel did, where we need to, again, meditate, where we need to focus in on the Lord. And in those moments and times, you better believe that God is not going to let you just faint, just let you pass out without ever sending his angels to lift you up. That is their duty, that is their role, that is their job to lift us up. Again, this battle that we are a part of today, it is one that is being waged on and on and on, and it is not an easy one for us to be able to endure. We certainly need the Lord's help. Yet again, in this battle, what we should understand is that we are not alone. And so we'll see there in 18 verse there, that the one having the likeness of a man, that one touched Daniel and again, we'll see that Daniel, he was strengthened. In those moments, again, when you are feeling so overwhelmed, don't try to take on life by yourself. Don't do it. That's where many of us get in trouble. We, we try to take on things by ourselves. Well, we have help. We have help all around us. And then most importantly, we have help that comes from above. And so we certainly should lean on the Lord, who again will lift us up by his righteous right hand. The Lord, when we lean on him, he will send his angels to tend to us, to minister to us, to care for our every need. There in the 19th verse, our lesson, it closes out with the angel saying to Daniel, peace be to you, the angel said to Daniel, peace be to you. 
The angel said to Daniel, be strong. The angel said, yes, be strong. Daniel, after that, he would go on to have the message that Christ was trying to share with him. He would have the vision, he would have it all revealed to him. Clarity, understanding would be given to him as well. God, what we should take away from this lesson today is that God, he, first off, he definitely wants to speak to you. <laughs> the, dev, the Lord definitely wants to speak to you. He wants to help you out because again, in this spiritual warfare, we are always under attack. The devil is always trying to attack us. The devil is always trying to, to hinder us, to keep us from, from our blessing. The devil, he doesn't want you to hear from God. The devil, like I said in the opening, he doesn't want you to hear from God because the devil doesn't want you to think that God loves you. The devil doesn't want you to think that God cares about you. The Lord does love you and the Lord does care about you. And again, he always has his eyes on you. And again, when you are in trouble, he will lift you up. When you are in trouble, he will lift you up by his righteous right hand. When you are in trouble, he will send his angels to tend to you, to minister to you. And so what we again must do in this spiritual warfare is be diligent in our faith. Continue to walk with God, continue to trust in him, be steadfast. Don't give up on God because God will never give up on you. The Lord, he is always faithful. We, we must remain faithful. Hey there, thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. And if you have any questions, if you have any comments, don't be afraid to leave a question. Don't be afraid to leave a comment as well. And again, if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following the New Found Faith channel. Make sure you hit the alert bell so that you don't miss any of our wonderful videos that we have here on our YouTube page.